I hope this is what I think it is at low man. I think most of the areas are normal looking with that uh, artifactual collapse, whatever we see uh, in the biopsies. But otherwise, this is a surgical lung biopsy. Wait, Rajiv, can you go back, go back down to Loma? Yeah. Let us let, let us go wrong, okay? Like, give us a chance to go wrong here. All right, um, guys, you want to make the guess at you want to write your thing and make a guess and show it at this mag or no? I, uh, uh, with the paper without yes make a guess on the paper without looking at anything else no history nothing and you would only have that and only have low mag you're never going to he's never going to show you the high mag what would be your diagnosis i like our microscope is broken and we have to just diagnose. microscope is broken <laughs> you you just have to call it on this mag there's nothing else and i think i, I i'm not at, at all confident that that's the right diagnosis here but i'm going to at least and then after you show the high mag, uh, Raghav will take another guess, okay? Okay. After okay. That. Don't tell <laughs> us. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to stick my neck out and <laughs> I'm sorry. I made... Could be wrong. I made it. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yes. Okay, yes. So let's go. Let's go to high mag. Wait, wait, for three. I I gave the clue saying that, yeah. No, you didn't. What was the clue, Raghav? That's the first thing I learned from Sanjay. Oh, I see. I, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about a meningothelial nodule. <laughs> the me meningothelial nodule, yeah, you're right. Even that, uh, yeah, that big paper you wrote with uh, Dr. Katzenstein, where the cancer cases have this meningothelial nodules. Yeah, I keep looking for those mentioning in my report. Nobody cares about what I mentioned in the report about meningothelial nodules. But it always excites me and also my residents that, oh, if they find meningothelial nodules, they'll be so excited that they're learning lung pathology. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> Okay, Raghav, are we correct? You are absolutely correct. Okay, hey. so go back to Lomag once more. Go back, go back. Raghav, please. I'm sorry to steal your thunder, but go back to Lomag. So yeah. can I have, Irene, can you tell us why? Because there will be residents watching this, right? Yes. Wow. Yes. Can you tell us why, what you see at Lomag and why did you say LCH? Can you describe that, Irene? Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it looks like a short, short leg octopus. This yeah. this not octopus. Short, <laughs> short leg octopus. I think it's uh, Dr. Leslie's description of, of these nodules. And and it looks like a little bit with, with the legs. And and it, it always makes me think about cells hysteresis. Yes. And I would like to go when I go down, I would like to see the clusters of Langer's cells and it would make it real. Yes. How about you, Matt? What what did you see? Anything else to add to that? Like, why did you call it LCH at low magnification? Um, and the other thing is, uh, you get a hint that they're, they're a smoker, right? I think there's some emphysema, you know, I, I, even as this low power, you can maybe get a hint that there's some lightly pigmented macrophages accumulating spaces. So smoker plus these stellate looking scars, like, or stellate looking cellular lesions. I think this is LCH. Yes. So Hi, suspicious. Go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. that's I, I agree that with that, Matt. Like there's a there's a hint that there might be emphysema in the background. You know, the reasons I was not completely sure, one of them is that the nodule is actually subplural, right? Mm. It's a yeah. subplural yes. nodule. Yes. And that's interesting because people are, often say, you know, peribronchiolar stellate scars, but in mm. fact, the peribronchiolar thing is not obvious. Like at, at least to an, a newcomer, they go, well, he, for example, in this case, Raghav, just leave it there. Can you just point at the bronchovascular bundle to the left of the, that's the bronchovascular bundle. To yeah. a novice, you know, they see that and they go, where's the peribronchiolar? There's nothing around the bronchiole. But in fact, what happens at LCH is not just that it's peribronchiolar, it's that it destroys or almost destroys the bronchiole that it involves. So often what's left is the artery. So when you show it to a, to a resident, they go, it's not peribronchiolar, it's periarterial. <laughs> and you have to explain to them like what exactly is going on here. So that's one thing. I thought this nodule is secondly a slightly bigger than the usual LCH nodule. Mm. You know, I yes. it was slightly smaller, but still it's millimeter size. So mm. that's worth saying that m almost always LCH nodules are millimeter size. They yeah. never get to one centimeter or more. Never. I, I and I know people say never say never, but it's never. The other thing I see in this field is 
just to the left and below, I think there's another LCH nodule there. Yeah. It is much more vague there. And chances are that you will find something in that too. But I think it's really good to show at LOMAG what people mean when they say stellate peribronchiolar nodule. What they mean is this uh, uh, octopus thing that uh, yeah. you talked about. Is this <laughs> stellate meaning star-shaped or octopus? And that's because the process is extending in the interstitium down into the surrounding lung. Okay, Raghav, now show us what what uh, what are the other features that are helpful. At yeah. High so uh, the story on this case is, so she had an history of uh, lung cancer before and she had a lobectomy before, uh, but unfortunately she did not stop smoking. Mm. Um, now she came with several millimeter size nodules like Sanjay was mentioning, the largest was two millimeters. So they did a lobectomy uh, on this because they were suspecting she had the cancer back, recurrence of the cancer. So that was the idea. And then the resident looked at this and the resident comes back saying that, oh, there is some nodule here. Um, I, I'm not able to fit into any uh, car carcinomas here. So what I'm seeing is uh, the resident was describing me that there's some this pink areas, the fibrotic looking in the background, there's some lymphoid aggregates, uh, but the resident did not have a specific diagnosis. Uh, so that was the story on this case. So on imaging, the, there were several millimeter size nodules. And then when I looked at this case, I felt this nodule was bigger, like you mentioned, than the usual LCH stellate or nodular kind of areas. But when I looked at this one, and then I looked at in other lobes, in other slides also, there were so, several similar looking areas. I started thinking of LCH. And then when we go down, uh, there's a lot of eosinophils in the background. I think the other nodule has got more characteristic features. I will go to that nodule in a second. Um, Raghav, can you show us the background lung a little? Because I didn't get the sense that there were too many macrophages in there. Maybe I, it's not visible at low mag. Yeah, they, yeah, there, yeah. Are. <laughs> there are lots of smokers macro means pigmented macrophages, not smokers macrophages. Yeah. Pigmented macrophages with fine yellow granular pigment um, in the background. And like Matt was pointing out, there were nice uh, emphysematous changes. There was also this fibromyxoid plux within the intraalveolar spaces corresponding to organizing pneumonia at the periphery of this lesion. And then when you go to the meat of the lesion, there are some entrapped or residual airway kind of epithelial structures. Yes. Uh, you can see here. These can occasionally get very, very worrisome. You know, these, yes. these entrapped things at the edge of LCH nodule. I've seen them actually being called adenocarcinoma. Yeah. Even on permanent sections. And sometimes it can be very uh, easy to misinterpret this as, as malignant. Yeah. Especially in yeah. a patient who has a history of cancer and heavy yeah, smoking. Yeah, exactly. Right? In fact, these patients almost always do have a history of cancer, which is why the thing is caught in the first place, right? There's a history yeah. of breast cancer or colon cancer or something, and they're doing surveillance and they see, oh my God, there's miliary nodules all over the place. And I feel like that's another thing that our textbooks don't do justice to this case is because when we write a pathology textbook, you know, we say, we just basically copy paste from the clinical literature and we say cystic lung disease, cystic lung disease, cystic lung disease, PLCH is a cause of cystic lung disease. Yes, it is. But the vast majority of what we see is not cystic lung disease. It's nodular lung disease. It's, it's miliary nodules that are thought to be you know, infection or, or um, uh, miliary metastases. And I don't think that we describe that enough in our textbooks. You know, the, the difference between reality and clinical theory is we, we, we don't do a good job of that. Go ahead, uh, I'm sorry, Raga. Oh, you're fine. That, that adds to the discussion because that exactly fits like what we are seeing in this case because we did not see any cystic uh, areas on imaging. What all we saw was a small little nodules and they were concerned of cancer, metastatic process. Uh, on the higher magnification, I think I got the right area. You have background eosinophils, lots of them, but the crux of the matter is this uh, elongated cells with whatever walnut type of appearance. Beautiful. Uh, uh, a corkscrew kind of uh, shape of this with uh, nuclear grooves. Uh, so for the residents, these are Langerhans cells, and uh, that's what 
when we see them, I think in the background of smoking related changes, that slam dunk uh, PLCH. This is like uh, many history sites kissing in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is like a paper ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ball, no, clear. <laughs> no, 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 I love the description. I, I can never forget that. No, um, me neither. <laughs> yeah, hey, so is the highest mag that you have? Is that the highest we can go? Oh, yeah, just if you could just leave it there for a few seconds. So if people are watching, they can, can you and just point at the best one you can, you know, I think all of those... them are longer hand cells, but just a good one. Yeah, like, I think this one that. I've got a walnut kind of, I can fit in a walnut kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And and uh, if you could just point at uh, uh, the eosinophil. Yes. Yeah. Those are the eosinophils, nice granules and everything. There's several of them in the background here, here. You know, just for you guys, since we are all pulmonary path nerds, can I just mention one thing? You know, we always say interstitial Langerhans cells, right? And, and they are, you know, mostly yeah. interstitial. But I find sometimes I can actually see them within the air spaces. In some cases, you know, they're in the air space. Yeah. And I figure maybe that's why the, you can occasionally see them on a BL specimen. But I've actually never seen a case that was diagnosed on the basis of BL cytology, although all the textbooks continuously talk about mm. this. I've never seen a case of LCH that was diagnosed on the basis of BL cytology alone. Have you ever seen one, guys, uh, any three of you? Yeah. I don't. I don't do cytology, but I. But sometimes they have uh, asked. The cytologists have asked me, and I checked the books, and I said maybe five or what the number they say. But yeah. I, I find it so. If it has not the radiologic setting or to, to call something Langer has hysteresis with a lavage, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Another another place where reality doesn't. Uh... <laughs> is not consistent with theory uh, you know it just doesn't it doesn't happen in real life that you have a bl based diagnosis of LCD. no the, the fact is that if you do cd1 in a b in a lavage from a smoker i think you would find this yeah. yes, yes then then the, the answer would be anytime they suspect uh steatosis, if you do the staining you would say yes it has five or it has ten yes yeah. then yeah, <laughs> yeah. Again, again. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I've not seen uh, anybody diagnosing uh, Langerhans cell histiocytosis on BAL. With uh, I, I'm not sure if uh, um, they they could uh, catch this uh, uh, grood kind of cells on BAL. Just call it histiocytes or leave it off or leave it it off as histiocytes or something like that. Or be descriptive. Histios we found histiocytes and eosinophils. Um, something like that. So that's a good question you bring up. And again, like the clustering, obviously you can see some scattered Langeran cells normally in the airways. Uh, so again, as per the pulmonary pathology literature, the clustering of this uh, CD1A positive or the Langerin positive cells is required uh, for the diagnosis of pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis, which I did do immunostains to demonstrate the resident that this was indeed PLCH. Uh, because the resident was like not believing me, <laughs> so I, I did do. How dare he, Raghav? No, no. The resident challenge your diagnosis. <laughs> no, it, it's not about challenge. It's about uh, showing showing <laughs> no, the kidding. showing the evidence that uh, this is indeed uh, uh, PLCH. But uh, at the at the end of the day, it turned out to be uh, exact fit for PLCH in this case. Now, when the resident is teaching his own resident twenty years down the line, he'll say, you know. Dr. Pilapa taught me at low magnification how to, how to diagnose. <laughs> yes, it is. Do, do you guys routinely stain them for BRAF? No, not, not us. Yeah, no. I, I did mention that in the report saying that uh, BRAF stain can be uh, acquired or uh, sent as we have a send out test for BRAF uh, IHC, but I don't know how much uh, it's going to add. Uh, means obviously there's a specific treatment for that. Uh, so, um, but, but who treats but who treats LCH with a BRAF inhibitor, right? It, I mean, smoking related LCH. Well, I, I think not all of these patients are. Um, some of them have progressive disease, right? Not all of them are are adequately treated by smoking cessation or steroids, right? So, right. is there any evidence that those are 
treatable by uh, Viral? There's, the, I think there's some case reports in the literature, but I don't know if there's a bit of large scale clinical study of it, but yeah, I, I, I don't do it routinely either. I just, um, I think some of these are, have BRAF mutations and that opens up therapeutic avenues in a patient who has recurrent disease or progressive disease. I mean, the reason I'm skeptical about that is that the ones who have the worst disease, right? Clinically, the ones that do yeah. badly are the scarred ones. You know, the ones that develop fibrosis, then it develops into honeycombing and all that. And at that point, there are no cells left. So what are you targeting with your, your BRAF? It just doesn't make any biologic sense. That's, yeah. that's why I'm skeptical about that idea. Yeah, this is, uh, I agree. Uh, this is just a CD1A stain uh, to complete the case. Nice. Thanks a lot. There are a lot. Beautiful, beautiful, Raghav. I yeah. think PLCH is one of the best things in palm path because everybody agrees with it. Everybody likes it. It's good for the patient. It's like one of the best case scenarios yeah. in lung pathology. Yeah. This one I would bottom line. I wouldn't put any waffly comments. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say cannot rule out suggestive, you know. No no waffles. Yeah. Again, one of the few things in lung path where people bottom line it, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's I, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that's that's what I have. Do you guys have time for one more case or we are done? We have well, I think we fast should, time. Yeah. I think we should be done now, then we, we okay. can um, you know. We can okay. do it another time because I would like both of you to come back if, if possible for future episodes. Whenever you can, just come back. We just have to chat. You don't even have to bring cases. Yeah. But if you have a nice case, you want to show it, this is the best place to do it because you don't have to prepare. Just bring it and we'll talk about it. Yeah, That's perfect. that's perfect. And uh, thank you for uh, 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 inviting me and uh, I would love to come back. And uh, this was a great discussion. I did learn a lot of stuff. Um, about the low power uh, magnification that <laughs>